the Lord. Amen. And you know, that's the only one we can lean on. Amen. It is the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because he, he can hold us up. Yes, Jesus. And I thank God for that. We have today Reverend Anthony Henry from, he passes down at Pleasant Hill in Clarkton. And he's a homeboy. He come out of this church, you know. Amen. And whenever I approached him about coming, he uh, right quick to say, yeah, I want to help my home church out. Amen. Amen. And that, that right there says a lot. Amen. Amen. And he got a lovely wife with him uh, today. And we and his, his mama and, and, and we all his king. Yes. Amen. Yes. We all we all blood related. So yes. uh, yes. I feel comfortable today in introducing him to you yes. because he yes. has shown to be a man of God over years. He came and helped us throughout the dedication. When, whenever we dedicated this uh, church, rededicated, he came and played a part in that yes. service. So. Amen. He's been very helpful to the church. So, uh, yes, give the Lord a hand, praise for him. Amen. You know, uh, during times like we going through with the pandemic and everything, you know, it's the human touch that means so much. Yes, yeah. Yeah. When people can come by and give you a helping hand, yeah. that that gives you encouragement. So, Amen. we're just so thankful to have him today. Now, on next Sunday, we're going to have uh, Reverend Christopher Murray. Uh, Amen. Also, we know him, and he come from the community, too, so he's well known. And then the, we won't have service on the uh, fifth Sunday, but the first Sunday in November, we got uh, Reverend Lowe's son, Ronnie Lowe, coming now. Uh, He's so excited about coming. You know, he went, he was talking to me the other night on the phone. He started naming out all the family. He said the Robinsons, the home, the Devane. I said, Ronnie, how in the world you remember all those families long, uh, uh, long as you've been gone? He said, uh, uh, it's a lot of my daddy and me, and I remember the things that he done and the people in that church, and he said he loved every last one of us. So, uh, we're, looking forward, we're looking forward to uh, seeing him. And just by way of announcements, all the active members that uh, if you want a privilege of serving on the search committee, pulpit search committee, just see Sister Janet Blunt and just give her your name because she, she'll be uh, uh, de uh, dealing with that committee shortly so we can uh, uh, get everything moving forward. And also our tie boss is right out there in the uh, vestibule, if, if, you know, uh, it's right when you walk by. So we just want you to know where everything is concerning that. So we're so happy. We're ready for the word. So after the choir come out with another selection, the next voice you will hear will be that. And none other than Reverend Anthony Henry. Just give it a run.
CSB, the Christian Standard Bible. Uh -huh. And if it is your custom to stand, you may do so at this time. Amen. Have the text. Amen. Jeremiah 18, verses 3 through 6. Praise God. Amen. 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 Again, I'll be reading from the Christian Standard Bible version. Amen. So I went down to the potter's house. And there he was, working away at the wheel. But the jar that he was making from the clay became flawed in the potter's hand. So he made it into another jar, as it seemed right for him to do. The word of the Lord came to me, House of Israel, can I not treat you as this potter treats his clay? This is the Lord's declaration. Just like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. Amen. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. 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 From this text, I want to bring out uh, to uh, your hearing in the hands of transition. In the hands of transition. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. 
that you have allowed us to gather in your house one more time. That's all I need, man. Lord, we didn't come for any form or fashion. We only come, came just to praise your name. Praise your name. Because, Lord, we need you right now. We need a touch from you right now. We need your guiding hand in our lives right now. We need a healing touch right now. We need transformation right now, Lord. It's like only you can do. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, as I stand behind this sacred desk to preach your word, Holy Spirit, hide. Let them see or hear, not at me. But let them see and hear from on high. Yes, Lord. Because, you, Lord, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. So allow your word to illuminate like never before. That it will lead us and guide us and draw us closer together. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the hands of transformation. Amen. When I was studying this text, and I must be honest, I, it was not the original text that I was studying, but it's amazing how the Holy Spirit will allow you to go the way you think you ought to go. Amen. But then, uh, Uncle Ford, he has a way of steering you in another direction. Yes, oh. yes. So now when he steers me in another direction, I don't get nervous. Because Amen. that lets me know, Sister Shirley, that God is in control. Yes, he is. And when we know that God is in control, we have nothing to worry about. Because we can safely say that we are then in the hands of the Master. Yes, How many of you know that, again, I said in my prayer that there are sometimes things may not look like what you want them to look like. Yeah. Things may not be going the way you think they ought to go. Yeah. But I just stop by to encourage you that don't run, don't hide. But as there's just some prayer will change this. Yeah. All you have to do is not fuss, not fight, but just fall down on your knees and ask the Lord to change things. Yeah. And then sometimes the change is not in the church. The change may be in you. Amen. Because when you really fall down to it, there's nothing wrong with God's house. What's wrong are the people in God's Amen. house. That God has to work too much. Amen. Uncle Bernie, I remember a song by Michael Jackson that said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. That I'm asking him to change his ways. Because in order, it's so easy for us to point at the fingers at somebody else. Saying, well, they need to do this and they need to do that. When God is trying to arrest our attention and say, now, what are what do you need to do? Amen. When we look at the text, and I'm almost through. Jeremiah had to have a visual lesson. And isn't it just like God to give us visual lessons? Because sometimes, Elder Martin, we can't sit, we can't learn through hearing. Sometimes God has to show us something visual. And here he tells the prophet, I want you to take a stroll down to the potter's house. I don't want you to ask him any questions. I just want you to observe. And isn't it interesting, Uncle Ford, that he tells him to go to the potter's house. In other words, we can extract from the text that this potter was not a novice. Yeah. That this potter knew exactly what he needed to do. Right. That this potter knew how to mold and shape the clay. In other words, what I want you to understand from this verse is, be careful who you go and listen to. Yeah. Be careful who you go and let lay hands on you. Because the, the Jeremiah had to go to the potter yeah. who knew exactly what he was doing. Sometimes, Sister Norma, we want to run to everybody else instead of going to God. If we would have gone to God in the first place, we wouldn't be in the mess that we normally find ourselves in. But Jeremiah went down to the potter's house, and he saw the potter doing something. He was working. Well, Deacon Henry, he wasn't laying around. He wasn't sitting down with his hands crossed. But he was found working. Yeah. Is God finding you working? 
Procrastinating? Is God finding you causing right, Is God finding you causing uh, right. mistrust within the body of Christ? What will God find you doing if He decides yeah. to walk yeah. down to your yeah. house? Definitely yeah. true. Amen. But here Good. Jeremiah found the part of doing what the part was supposed to be doing: yeah. sitting and working at the wheel. Yeah. I know me and my wife love watching these shows when they show these parts. And they have this lump of clay, and they just slap it on this spinning wheel. And the wheel goes round and round, yeah. and it's still just a lump of clay spinning yeah. on a wheel. Wow, wow. Has life seems like it has you going in circles, mm. round and round and round like a merry-go-round. So, and sometimes baby. you want to get off, but you can't get off. You don't know where the stop button is. You don't know where the pause button is. But then God has you on this wheel for a certain purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nothing takes shape until the potter first dips his hands in some water. Right. Right. Isn't it interesting that clay needs water to be molded? Yes, yes. Isn't it? Aren't we made from dirt? Yes. And it needs water yes. to be washed? Not only physically, but also spiritually. Yes, yes. And I'm getting somewhere with this. The potter had to wet his hands. And then he took his wet hands and started molding around the clay. The clay is still spinning. But now it's spinning between the potter's hands. Now changes begins to take place. But here's something else that I want you to get. As the potter was making the jar, yeah. as he was forming it in his hands, something happened to the jar. Yes, Lord. He didn't like the way the jar looked. Yeah. And isn't that like God that he starts spinning? Yeah. And isn't it funny, Sister Henry, we can stand in the mirror and say, ooh, I love the way I look this morning. But God said, y'all, we look on the outward appearance. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I look on the inward appearance. Look good on the outside, but I see past the suit. I see past the tie. I see past the dress. I see what's on the inside of your heart. And even though you may think you look good on the outside, I still need to do some more shaping of you on my wheel. I need to spin you around just a little bit longer. But Lord, I'm happy with just the way I am. And that's the problem. Some of us get too happy and too content just the way we are. And God is saying, no, I'm not through with you yet. Yes. I still need to do some more molding and shaping in you. There's still some cracks in your armor. Oh, yes, and I need to show up just a little bit. Yes. Because with, if I put you in the fire with those cracks, Elder Mark, you're going to fall to pieces. Yeah. Haven't you ever wondered why you haven't fallen to pieces when things come up in your life? That's because God has filled in some cracks that needed to be hey. filled. That's because God was preparing you for the fire before you had to go through the fire. The power. Yes. Yes. Saw that the clay was flawed yes. in the potter's hands. Yes. Thank and you. this is what I love. He saw the floor before it got out of his hands. Yes. In Amen. other words, as long as it was still in his hands, yes. there was still salvation available. Yes. Aren't you glad he's still all in the hands of yes. the Lord? Yes. Which is Jesus yes. Christ? Yes. That he never takes his hands off of us? Yes. That he promised us Preach that he would never leave us alone? I don't like what I see in you. So I'm going to shape you and shift you and shift you into something else. Because I'm the part. You are the clay. And I know you've heard this. The, pot, the, the clay didn't tell the potter what it wanted to be. It was the potter who made the clay into what he wanted it to be. We can't tell God what we want to be. But it is God who shapes us and molds us into what he was want us to be. And then Jeremiah.
Jeremiah after he saw this, this visual illustration. The word of God came to him and said, House of Israel, can I not treat you as the potter treats this clay? That's deep right there, y'all. Mm -hmm. God is saying, if it's all right for the potter to treat the clay like that, mm -hmm. and no one complains, mm -hmm. why will you complain when I, who created you, mm -hmm. who formed you out of clay, Yes. who breathe, breathe the breath of life into your nostrils. Yes. Why are you fussing at me when I'm trying to shape you and mold you right. into something better than what you already are? Yes. In other words, God had to remind Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I am the one who created you. Yes. I am the master part. Yes. You are just the clay. Yes. In other words, you allow me to mold you, to shape you, into what I know that you need to be. Yeah. And you go back and let Israel know that the potter is Jesus Christ. Yeah. You yeah. go back and let, let Royal Chapel know that the potter is Jesus Christ. Yeah. We are just the clay. Yeah. And the potter, the master potter, is just going to come and start shaping us and molding us into what he would want us to become. Yeah. It's not time for us to run off the spinning wheel. But it's time for us to stand firm on the spirit. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And the Holy Spirit to begin to mold us and shape us in the way that He wants us to be. That's yes. true. And the Lord ends this and said, just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, house of Israel. It's good to know that we're in. The potter's hand. We are in the potter's hand. It's Thank good you. to know that he is not through with us yet. No, he is not. Thank you, Jesus. It's good to know that what the way things look like now is not how they're going to end up. No, being. no. That God already knows the outcome of the transition, of the transformation that's about to take place. Amen. All Amen. God is doing is getting y'all ready for the transformation. Yes. Yes. Just allow God's hands to mold and shape you individually. Yes. Thank you, and then he will bring us together yes. collectively. Thank you, Lord. I'm reminded of this story of an old World War II pilot. His name is Eddie Rickenbacker, and some of you may have heard the story. He was a World, World War I ace, fire pilot. By the time World War II came around, he was too old to fly fighter combat. But he still wanted to help out the country. So they allowed him to fly cargo planes from island to island, dropping off cargo. So he can still feel as if he's given a contribution. One day on one of his flights, there was engine trouble. And it took them far off their course. And they crashed in the ocean. All the members on board were saved. They were in a life raft. And since they were off course, the search and rescue parties could not find them. Royal Chapel, this is how I feel y'all are. You're off course. Oh, yes. The search parties can't find you right now. Right. Amen. But Eddie and them ate up all the rations. They were about at the point of death. The sun was beating down. There was no rain, so they couldn't get any fresh water. They were just about ready to give up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lord Shackle, don't give up. Some of you may feel like giving up. But don't give up. Amen. Eddie, Amen. who was a believer, That's the truth. said one last prayer and said, Lord, I believe this is it. He put his hat on and he laid down in the boat. But then Deacon Stanley, all of a sudden, a seagull uh -huh. landed on his head. He still had some quick reflex, ref, reflex left. He was able to grab the bird 
dispatch it. And they were able to survive off the bird. Oh, my Lord. Royal Chapel, God has a way of sending some manna every now and then. Oh, yeah. to keep you alive until oh, yeah. the rescuers come. Oh, that's right. preach, the preach, bird kept preach. them alive yeah. until oh, the rescuers yeah. found them. Yeah. Yes, now, this young couple, I'm fast forward and see this old man with a bucket of breadcrumbs walking toward the pier. And curiosity got the best of them. They said, wonder what this old man is going to do with this bucket of breadcrumbs. He walked along the pier and they followed him from a distance. He got to the end of the pier and he started scooping up some breadcrumbs and the seagulls were flying overhead. And he started throwing the breadcrumbs in the air. And they could see his lips moving, but they couldn't hear what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So they drew closer to him. As they got closer, they kept seeing him throw the, oh, the breadcrumbs in the air. His lips moving. Throwing the breadcrumbs. His lips moving. Then as they got closer, Deacon Stanley, they heard him say, as he threw the breadcrumbs break crumbs in the air, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Walter said, hey, he was yeah. paying homage back to the seagulls yes, because yeah. one gave their life to save him. Yeah. Yeah. Royal Chapel, this is what we have to do every day. Yeah. It wasn't a seagull that saved us, but it was a man called Jesus Christ. Yeah. No matter how hard things may seem, we got to go around throwing up our hands in praises and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for watching over me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for holding me. Thank you for keeping me. Did he come home? He come home to feed us. Amen. 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 He fed us the word today. And it hit me. He says, whatever it takes, take a stand for Jesus. Stand for Jesus. I just thank God. I thank God for the word today. Amen. And you know what's so good about it? He going to be back with us the next uh, two-thirds Sunday. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe he's going to enter the next year because he loves his home and uh, he told me, I, as long as you need me, I'll be right here. God will come to your rescue. Yes, God will answer your prayer. Yes, and we just we just thank everybody for coming and the musicians now will Say us a close to him and uh, Reverend Henry will come back and give us the close.